Hello and welcome to Farm Space. Right, it's that time of year again, just after the Borough Nationals, and it's time for the Nampo of Borough and Sales, and it's ours, as I call it, and I'm here with Simeon Hurwitz, as always. And we're talking about this year's uh, Hurwitz production auction, what you can expect, and uh, what, they've got up to, what they've been up to, and as always, um, they're bringing the best you can get in the boron industry. Simeon, hello and welcome. Oh, I, I must, you must tell me welcome here. Yeah. Welcome, Tennis. <laughs> nice to have you back, as and always. That, always great. Um, as I always say, it's for me, this is a nampo of, of boron auctions. It's always been that way. Um, the bull sales, I'm going to start with the bulls quickly. Um, fr from a starting point, uh, you've got the two brothers that you're competing off against each other, but the talking point for me uh, I want to get to is, um, a well-balanced, well-selected bunch of bulls. A little bit for everyone, but overall there's not much to choose between them. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dennis. The <laughs> Nampa Boran auctions. And you coined that <laughs> phrase, actually. That's all. You must copyright that. Um, no, Dennis, you, you're quite right. The selection of bulls, I think, this year, again, you know, it's on par with, I think, previous yeah. years, if not even maybe better. I don't know. Yeah. We'll soon see. <laughs> <coughs> but the selection criteria, we started with, for this particular auction, with 97 bulls. I mean, that's a hell of a, hell of a starting block to now chop that down to, you know, there's nine bulls, I think, left on the sale, including the two brothers you mentioned. Yeah. And yes, to try and find something for everybody on the sale um, and stud bulls that everybody wants to use or somebody wants to use in their herd <coughs> that's the target of the sale on an affordability range as well so there must be something the genetic variety is something we concentrate on nicely for this and then the, you know the balance the phenotype the balance the figures who the animals are proven stud bulls or you know their brothers or sisters or come out of good cows that have been you know successful bull breeders as well um, you know it's all blends together nicely so mm. I think yes it's a, it's a nice bunch as you said, we've got the two the two brothers, which um, I think will be a big talking point. We've got the Picasso son out there. We've got Rolo's son for the first time that we're selling um, a son out of Rolo. And, you know, the list continues. In fact, there's a 98 son out here um, out of a very established cow who's bred herd size in other herds that are doing fantastically well. And it's all about genetics. And this is uh, stud farming. Yes, we must look at all the values and everything else. But, you know, ultimately the genetics also speak for themselves. So, me and if we five, six years back and we look at photos of, of Boron bulls uh, at general production auctions, you didn't see the top lines we see today. Um, and I must say, for me, one of the great things was to look today and say, listen, but there's not one top line here that you can't iron on. Um, <laughs> and, and, and that's at, at the end of the day what you want in a bull. You want that's where they carry their meat uh, mm -hmm. that's the structure of the animal mm -hmm. and when you look at them from behind and, they sh and they're showing it perfectly you don't see that narrow frames anymore you're seeing well built an animals and that's that's quite choice you, you, you have the animal to do it from luckily <laughs> um, and you have to you have the choice to do it from uh, you get 97 animals to choose from yeah uh, yeah. yeah 79 right? yeah. 79 animals to choose from yeah. and that and that's sort of a difference for you isn't it yeah absolutely but I think what you're talking about here is actual teamwork mm -hmm. um, that's played its part over the last couple of years and you know that's teamwork is many members of the team and one of those is also the boring society and the inspectors and the job that they do um, which is a very strict job and not a nice job either but you know that first selection when the animal's 24 months old when the guys come out and they really put uh, their tooth comb through it that's when you start to filter out a bit of the problem animals that's why I think the national herd is improving on such a yeah. strong basis but if we look at our own herd yeah sure the selection criteria helps us a lot um, we cull a fortune of animals during the year and throughout the life as well you know from from weaning age and every now and again um, which allows the selection of when an animal matures to be a bull by definition of the word bull to come onto an auction then yeah surely there should be as faultless as possible there's no such thing as a faultless yeah. bull or faultless animal but yes the, you know the structure must be right the phenotype must be right the top lines the depth the sheath the legs the walking ability the mounting ability the testes, you know, the masculinity in a bull, the neck, the head, the whole picture must yeah. equal a bull. Um, so yes, that's the teamwork element. I see this quiet, nicely showing the this good chief and top line over there. Um, another thing that caught my eyes, we've got two darker bulls, you want to call it. not black, but the darker, almost, the, um, I think Wellington is the one that caught mm. my eye. Uh, something different, but spectacular. If you look, look at him from the front, 
um, width between the legs is amazing. Mm. Um, where does he come from? Just a little background, but he's an interesting looking. Yeah, uh, bull. he's definitely got characteristics being like bontish <laughs> grey, which I've never really seen before. But the two bulls you're referring to, they are darker at the moment, but that's also the adaptability of the animal, the adaptability of the product, and that's what the Boran does. Depending on what the environmental conditions are, it will respond accordingly. Um, almost like a chameleon does, I suppose, yeah. on which branch of a tree it changes its shade to. So they do a similar type of thing. So in summer, these bulls would be um, lighter and the one would be redder, for sure. I mean, we've seen it, we've got photos of it. Yeah. And the same will happen in six weeks, eight, eight weeks' time when the seasons change again. Um, and it's been cold here. Let's not forget that we've had snow for the first time in my life that I've ever heard of. Um, it's been really cold, the mornings are cold. The variation in temperature between you know, morning, afternoon to midday is severe. So in these animals, whatever you throw at them, they go with it. But yes, Wellington is a Rolo son. It's the first Rolo son that we're selling who's a Rolex. Um, Rolo is a Rolex son. You know, Ronaldo we sold um, a few years ago. That's all coming out of the same sire line. On his dam side, he's out of NDA 9 and B96615, the two Bontis that have established Bont in this country. Um, so he's actually quite a spectacular bull, and I think he'll, uh, he'll surprise a lot of people. And then the other one you mentioned is the Picasso son. What's interesting for me about Picasso is, um, although he was a Bond bull, and we're selling semen <laughs> actually on the sale, um, yeah. you know, a lot again, of it's going red. Yeah, a lot of it is red. <laughs> so um, he breeds, you know, it's not, this is not paintings that we work on, this is livestock. So um, yeah, he's got some red progeny and he's got some born progeny. And it's about the animal, it's about the structural correctness, the beef carrying ability of the animal. And he must be a sound bovine animal. Mm. That's what they're about. No. So I mean, as, uh, as always, uh, females that you're selling this year is from a wide variety of genetics. Yep. You have the ability, you have the capability to sell a wide variety of genetics. Um, and the thumping, something that stood out for me from the start is um, the cars next to it mm. are mostly heifers, or a lot of them I mean, is heifers. Mm. And you don't see that production auction. People are not always willing to sell top class animals and their progeny. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, it's, it's true. Is, it a, is it a Herbert decision or is it just the way things went? You, you pick the best animals for the auction and buy. Who called by cook? Uh, they had females next to them. Um, a bit of both. We always sell females. Mm. We always sell female heifer calves at foot. Always, it's the future generation, and that's the longevity of what mm. you know the buyer is buying as well, and he wants that also. Because you know bulls, mm. it's not easy to breed a stud bull. They might look good as calves, but over the lifetime, they don't always turn out to be what you thought they were going to be. A but lot your can heifers, go wrong. <laughs> yeah. But your heifer calves, you've got more chance. So it's a little bit more um, peace of mind and safety for a buyer as well. But the selection criteria on the females and how we got to where we are um, in our offering it's also it was a it was a huge balancing act and a, mm -hmm. a huge reduction act I mean we started with a herd there of just under 170 animals to whittle that down to a herd of 40 the genetic variety there <coughs> is 44 different sires used to create 50 lots mm -hmm. which includes our guest sellers this year for the first time we've got Mostine that's joining us and we've got Henk Puerta regular but I mean the animals they're bringing funnily enough come out of Herbert's genetics it wasn't orchestrated <laughs> like that they selected <laughs> them like that Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's one of the selection mm -hmm. criteria is the genetics. Then came the intercalving periods of the animals to make sure that that's all correct, the EBVs to make sure that that all's correct. Uh, on the intercalving period, it's actually it became a thing in the last years and people are realizing so we can't be as lenient as you were in the past. Um, in the past, people had to be lenient. There was a certain amount of genetics. Uh, there was yeah. a lot of flashing going around. So yeah. it made sense these days to be a productive poor on farmer you need something that's going to call every year yeah um your icp overall what are we looking at if you at, at a guess <laughs> you're quite right mm. the, the icp is a very critical part of uh, selection and also buying um, and these animals i mean these they sell for a lot of money we can all follow the trends and see where the prices are at the moment of these animals and they're expensive so a buyer must have reasonable comfort as to what he's buying but you know i think on this auction the majority of the icp is under 400 days which is a tremendous effort especially over the size of the herd yeah. but that's that's the whittling down that's the selection criteria and that's getting it right that's blending the sale a budget for everybody 
the phenotype right, the figures right, the intercarving right, the age at first carving right. Now I say the word right, but that right means it must be good. Um, <laughs> On and it, time. Uh, yeah, and it must be something that I want to buy. Yeah. as well. Now, um, we're not lenient on our, on our farm and with our herd, but we certainly don't push the animals beyond their capability. Mm. So we allow them to grow out. We only bull them from 24 months onwards. We allow them to calf. We allow the intercalving periods there afterwards to follow suit or within uh, society norms. Um, and it's what they are. But this is why the boron is known as the mother cow of Africa. Um, this is what it returns to. This is what it does in a commercial operation as well as in a stud operation. Um, this is one of the reasons why they're a profitable breed to farm with. And, you know, a calf on the ground will be the telltale of, uh, of where production and yet your, your income will start from. A non-productive cow can do very little for you other than look good. So it all has to marry up. And um, yes, the selection of the females for this auction is magnificent. Uh, the other thing, on the, the heifer standing next to, next to their mother's half, and most of them are Looks like they're the same size of their mothers. Mm. Um, and that mm. must be must be something to say. Listen, but we are now breeding something that is yeah, it, may, it might not be the biggest cow, but what what follows is maturing quicker. Yep. and it's definitely putting something that uh, extra meat yeah. than we might have seen five years ago in the breed. Correct. Um, Correct. And it it, uh, it was just almost obvious when you walked in there. So, yeah, but these cows are enormous for. For calves, yeah, um, and it's not just it's the heifers, yeah, that big, um, yeah. Some of them are a little bit older, yeah, but obviously, older, yeah. a little bit between say seven and nine months, so they're starting to look like they are mm. fully formed. Mm. But you're 100 percent right; those heifer calves and the bull calves are standing out. And I think when people arrive here on the 5th of August at the sale, you know, I, don't, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the comment is, "Well, the calves are better than the mothers," <laughs> um, as as that's, as that might be. And, and the calves are want. fantastic. You want the progeny to do be better than? Hmm, that's well, how it must be. That's every every stud breeder, no matter the breed. Mm. That's their goal. That's their goal. Yeah. You know, Simeon, as always, been a pleasure. Thank you, Tennis. And we'll talk to you soon. Yep, thank you. Okay, 5th of August here in Darfur at the Brewing. Make sure you get here. And there's something here for everyone. If you didn't get to buy something last year, make sure you get here. And there's a lot of semen lots here as well that you can buy. So, we'll see you 5th of August at 11. Cheers.